One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Yeah. Extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh, yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's, and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're given the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. Outside, outside, <laughs> outside, everybody, everybody outside. outside. Okay, right on, Mel. <laughs> line up, line up for your what Shop is, Tour Bus shop t-shirt. Tour bus. Shop Whoa. Tour Bus, everybody. Go check out Shop Tour Bus. They have the online lots. Dopest Grateful Dead inspired t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, yeah, tote bags, hats. All you kinds know, of fun stuff. The stuff that we all like to wear, man. You know, No Simple Road isn't getting like shitty sponsors, man. We're getting no. family owned and operated businesses that we want to support you should support them too go check out shop tour bus they send you whatever you order in a really dope all over printed box all these extras come in there some of you are even going to get a miracle bootleg in your order that's right and you also get a bootleg pencil in there to spool it with and a whole bunch of other goodies. Yep. And you're getting free shipping. If you put in the promo code, no simple road, all one word. When you check out, you are getting free shipping from the fam. So wow. go check out at shop tour bus on Instagram or shop tour bus.com. Order yourself something fresh. It's time to update that wardrobe shop tour bus. It's the afternoon or the evening and you're hungry and you want to go get something to eat and that dreaded age old question comes, hey, what do you guys want to eat? And there's I like don't know. the six places that you always go. I'm fine with anything. No, you're not. Change it up. Go to <laughs> Fire on the Mountain, man. If you're here in Portland, there's three locations, so you have no excuse. There's one close to you and there's two in Denver. Same thing. No excuse. Go check it out. The best chicken wings, the best salads. Vegan options, vegetarian options. And those desserts are hitting it. And they're throwing dope specials at you quicker than you can eat them. And if you'd like to have a little drinky drink, they have their own brewing company. Fire, Fire on, on the Mountain, Mountain Brewing. brewing. They're An- hooking it up. Another rad thing that they have is some awesome merch. They've got some trucker hats. They've got some dope socks. They've got some uh, silicone cups. Really silly, cool. silly pints. Silly pints. That's right. And they've got their sauces that you can order to make your own at home. So if you're interested in any of this and you aren't in Denver or Portland, you can go to portlandwings.com and get yourself a hoodie or some sauces or a trucker hat. And you can listen to No Simple Road. And then like, there's like this weird cosmic beam that comes from the sky and it'll warm your heart and make you fill with love. <laughs> and who doesn't want to be filled with love? So go check it out. Fire on the Mountain. PortlandWings.com at FOTMPDX or at FOTM Denver on Instagram. It looks delicious, I promise. Mm. That spring and that summer tour are getting ready to start, and you are going to be going to a lot of venues you maybe have never been to before. And it would be good if you could have a little heads up before you go in, know what the security's like. I'd love a heads up. Know where the sound is the best. 
know where to grab something to eat near where, there. Where the to, bathroom situation is that, always a good thing. Yeah, that's definitely a, a plus. So there is a new website. It's called VenueLama.com, and it's an online resource that provides live music fans the insider venue info they need. A place where fans can quickly rate venues and share various tips and intel about those venues. VenueLama.com launches in late spring, but they're currently doing a sneak peek for No Simple Road listeners. They are compiling their llama base with as much helpful information as possible on venues for the following upcoming tours. Dead & Company, Fish, Widespread Panic, Billy Strings, and Goose. So head on over to check out the exclusive beta version of Venue Llama today at VenueLama.com forward slash N. S R. That's V E N U E L L A M A dot com forward slash N S R. Boom. Hey everyone, Chris Pandolfi from the infamous String Dusters here to let you know that my podcast Inside the Musician's Brain is back on the airwaves for season four, which means it's time once again to get deep with influential musicians from all across the musical landscape to really understand and translate the lessons of success, failure, inspiration, and hard work that are behind the music and the artists that we love. My guests this season include Rachel Price from Lake Street Dives, Sam Bush, Chris Wood, Chris Funk from The Decemberists, Lindsay Liu, MC Taylor from His Golden Messenger, and more. Check us out, and thanks for listening. We're so excited to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Music Masters Collective. They are a nonprofit organization that produces unique music events, providing opportunities for fans and artists to meet and collaborate in an inspired and creative atmosphere. Music Masters Collective events give you the opportunity to learn from world-class musicians like Otil Burbridge, Steve Earle, Richard Thompson, former members of the band, the Mel Carton Kids, Nikki Glaspy, the Fab Foe, and Sean Colvin, and so many more. At an event like the Milk Carton Kids Sad Song Summer Camp happening this July, you can expect immersive classes, evenings of entertainment, excellent food, and a space for a lucky group of folks to learn, co-write, workshop, and perform with like-minded peers, all with the guidance of Kenneth Pattengale, Joey Ryan, and some of their favorite songwriters. This all-inclusive week in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York is guaranteed to be magical. Scholarships are available, and spots are extremely limited. So visit www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple to learn more. That's www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple. Check it out. in time um well actually not exactly right now but right now today right now we're getting ready to go see fish in seattle oh shit i'm so excited (laughs) i'm so excited man yeah yeah and what a great place to be going and dropping this exact episode with natalie Natalie Cressman. hey now no simple road family this is aaron and mel and apple um you everybody Here's the thing. <laughs> Already? So excited. The thing. <laughs> so excited for you all to hear this conversation with yeah. Natalie Cressman. This actually, um, this conversation completes our tour of the tab horn section. So I'm just saying one step closer to that interview with Trey. Trey, we're ready when you are, man. You know, just give us a holler. We're bro. all warmed up. Yep. Yep. Ready to go. Um, this was a blast yep. talking with Natalie and it was really cool. Cause like, I don't know, maybe two or three days after we did this, mm-hmm. Mel and I went and saw her and her husband here in, Ian, a, yeah. in a 
Portland at a little jazz club. Called 1905 that has been there for four years, which yeah. I never even heard of. And apparently Natalie has played there, played there before as well. And it was such a fun, cool time. Like their music was gorgeous. It, it was, was amazing. It was amazing. The food was good. The I mean, it was a definitely a tight fit, yeah. but it was cute. It, like well, I liked it, was, it. It was too bad that your seats were so far back and you couldn't really see oh the performance. Yeah, that's the only, my only bugaboo was eating pizza four feet from Natalie Cressman that playing the, the on picture. stage. It was like I felt weird eating that close to them like it, it seems like, like i was doing disrespect- something wrong like yeah. disrespectful yeah. you're like oh, oh. i definitely i definitely tried to like not, not clink your- yeah not <laughs> i tried to do it as gracefully as i could because it definitely was really close but i liked being that close and just kind of oh, that was, yeah, it was cool to be close yeah. just eating that i felt like apple said, i just couldn't believe how close they are aaron took that one where you're holding your food for perspective and it's like right there. i was like oh my god but and Ian and I, playing the most amazing guitar, flamenco what style a great Brazilian voice, guitar, Ian. and her playing the trombone. And then it was a really rainy day, so here, rainy and evening here in Portland. And the 1905 must have a metal roof. Yeah, there was some kind of acoustics All happening that, like, with the rain, and mm-hmm. it sounded so cool, dude. Mm-hmm. Like with the that music and the rain hitting the tin roof, it was a perfect it was ambiance. Like, it was a perfect night. It was like rainy and like kind of like romantic, and the music was beautiful, and they were so sweet, and it was a really great time. And a friend of mine from work, her and her husband showed up, and yeah. that was super fun. And yeah. it, it, after talking, and they loved it. Yeah, they did. They really had a good time. After talking to Natalie and um, Jennifer and James, it really is evident that Trey has um, a real knack for finding yeah, for like talent, g- not just not- talented people, because talented people is one thing. These are like really great human beings. Yeah. Good and heart, he has a lot everything. of trust in young musicians. Yeah, that's true. That I mean, it seemed very similar to the story that Jen told us about her mm-hmm. getting a phone call from Trey, and like that is such a high compliment. But also, like on on his end, there's a lot of trust that he's putting into these incredible younger musicians to say, like, "Hey, well, come on, let's do there's it." There's another dimension to this conversation too that we haven't even mentioned yet. That we did this interview in preparation as part of our lead up to going to Skull and Roses Skull next and week. Skull and Roses. And um, Natalie is playing with Phil. The horn section is playing the, with yeah, Phil. Yeah, the tab horn yeah. section is playing with Phil. So talk about like older musicians trusting younger musicians. Yeah. It's, it's rife in the community that we're a part of that they do that. And to hear Natalie's take on playing Grateful Dead music with Phil is going to be amazing. It's super cool. And, <laughs> no, and I'm really, I am really, <clears throat> truly looking forward to hear what they bring with Phil in that too. environment. And to hear, to hear Grateful Dead music done by Phil is amazing. Period. But to hear Grateful Dead music done by Phil with horns in the arrangement is super exciting. And then to add tab horns on top of that. <laughs> yeah. It just keeps on well, because they're <laughs> so <laughs> dialed in with each other. And she talks about that a little bit in the interview that you guys will hear. And it's like, you know, like, okay, the shook twins, their voices are incredible and their acapellas and their harmonies are amazing mm-hmm. because they're twins and they have that certain thing with them. But also because James and Natalie and Jen had played with each other for such a long time. They too kind of like brothers and sisters have this connection of knowing how to play so tight with each other. Right. And that is exciting when they're with in tab and then in like thrown in to fill. So if that didn't like get you off the fence to come with us to skull and roses come with us You're blowing it man come on let's go like five days april 19th through the 23rd right 
Ventura, Ventura, California. At the Ventura County Fairgrounds where the Grateful Dead played. Jimi Hendrix played there. Like, this is amazing. On the beach. Yeah, this is an amazing <laughs> place to go see any music, but this is going to be really special. Tickets are available now. You can get single day tickets. There's VIP experiences still available. Go to skullandroses.com and grab a ticket and um, come hang out with us and, and watch Nat play with Phil. Yeah. And this is going to be epic and i just want to say natalie thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and then coming to portland and playing for us like i know it wasn't just for us but it was just for us she <laughs> but, flew all the way out here for I you know. And you know. um but ian's amazing his voice is phenomenal you two have such a great musical chemistry and i just really enjoyed being a part of it and i was great to be a witness to that yeah yeah uh and I, I wish it. I would have been there. I'm sorry I wasn't there, Natalie and Ian. I know you missed me. Oh, it was date it was night, a, man. It was you the, invited. It was the yeah, day, it was day well, night. It, it was the day after. Well, it, it turned into date night because it was the day after I had a surgery. So oh. I was recuperating. Oh, but that's right. I forgot. Oh, my, their music is so amazing. Yeah, man. So let's um let's get them to the to the conversation. Is there is there tour dates that we need here? Yeah, Apple? yeah. I was just gonna throw that out real quick. You can go to. Uh, you can go to nataliecressman.com for her website. She's also on Instagram. Um, she's going to be playing Skull and Roses two days with Phil Lesh and friends. Mm -hmm. And then she's she's staying busy. She's going off with Phil Lesh on May 5th at Frost Amphitheater. And oh, then wow. with the Jennifer Hartswick Band for three dates in May. And then Philippe Salas, Sextet, Everyone Orchestra, Wow. Uh, some more with her husband Ian. Yeah, go to and the lo website. A lot of dates coming up. She's staying busy playing with lots of people. Yeah, man. And That's she's uh, going to be in the Pacific Northwest again, March 26th um, in Seattle, Washington. Right on. So that's going to be super awesome. So, yeah. Like I said, if you were on the fence about Skull and Roses or you were just like waiting till the last minute, stop it. Just stop it. Get your tickets. Come hang out with No Simple Road. Come do the thing. It's the beginning of the year. A festival in April in California on the beach. That's a no brainer. So beautiful. Yeah. Come on, guys. Let's do it. Uh, let's get them to the conversation. What do you guys say? Let's do the business. Yeah, do the business. And Follow No Simple Road at No Simple Road on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the TikTok. Right, Apple? You still doing the, it? The TikTok. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. Yes. Go to www.nosimpleroad.com. Get yourself some NSR merch. Get a tarot reading from Mel and I. Ooh. Um, what else? Sign up for the newsletter there. How about call our tepid line at 971-808-1524. That number again is 971-808-1524. And leave some fun knowledge. Drop some cool like things that you found out along the way in your life. Or how about share a recipe? How about let us know where you're going to be this summer. Come visit us. Tell, tell us, us what to your come favorite visit you. book is. Yeah. I love reading fantasy books and listening to audio books. I need some book suggestions. Call the tepid line. Give me some book suggestions. Yeah, I want recipes. Okay. So there right, it there is. We that, go. That's 971-808-1524. Hang on. There we go. I had a frog in my throat. Um, you know what? Our Patreon page has been revamped. We have new patrons that have oh my come gosh, on board yes. and I, i've been mad adam thank you so much for joining us two days ago who mad adam oh, we, uh, Ma mad adam that's okay right. i was like wait did you just say mad adam yes i sure mad did adam i like and that. i just want to say that since Corey, our newfound wonderful producer has revamped and taken over our patreon numbers have grown and i am so grateful to you Corey, and also for for that but also for just bringing breathing new life into it well it, what happened is there was nothing happening over yeah. there Corey took over now there's a whole new show on patreon that's for our patrons only called side roads there's all interviews with what do we do just mel just did one with tough guitar oh yeah uh quinn tough um at tough guitars on instagram this young man is incredible the way that he plays the guitar with such ease and grace and such a relaxation on his freaking fingers i can't express how relaxing it looks to watch him play or if you want to find out what mel thinks about pendulums or who hank innerfeld is or what weird what, shit i did in high school yep or what 
pranks my sister pulled on me when I was a kid. These are all things that you can find out if you sign up on Patreon. It's a, really a place to learn about us and the family and the community. Yeah. I mean, it, they even got one with, with their son is coming up. Yeah. The and I'm daughter. excited about that one. And, and you know what, man? Like, the No Simple Road community is really growing, and that is the hub of the community. So if you're a listener of this show, go to patreon.com forward slash No Simple Road. Sign up for as little as a buck a month. You get all the extras that are over there, and you can find out all the inside info that I just told you about that you're like, what is Aaron talking about? Then you'll know. Um, that's how you find out. And then there's also Apple Podcasts where you can go on there. You can hit that five stars. Uh, we had two reviews last week, none this week, but yeah, there's right. plenty of time. It's all good. Yeah, it's April. Get it, get on there. Leave us, you know, leave, leave us a nice little review. It makes us so happy, and we love shouting it out. Most of all, just tell somebody that you know and love about No Simple Road. If you do like John B and yeah. be like in line at a show and, and be like, yo, you got a long drive home. Here's what you should do and be like, you should listen to No Simple Road. And as even recommended fact, an episode. As a matter of fact, give me your phone. I'm going to subscribe to it on your phone for you. And then you can listen to it. Take care of all of it. Yeah. You're, you're just handle now. it for, for people. But uh, sign you up for Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> seriously, though, tell somebody you know about the show. That'd be really awesome. And that helps us grow. And there and truly is something for everybody on here. I mean, you could go through the catalog and find something for your mom, your dad, your cousin, little brother, older sister. There's, there's might, something. I mean, we might curse a little bit for two yeah, young of you kids. You might not want kids listening to him. But, oh, okay. Uh, we yeah, gotta, but. That's okay. That's all right. Something for everybody. Kids, kids over eighteen. How about that? So anyway, let's get him to the conversation with Natalie. Let's do that. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Without further ado, the No Simple Road Crew gives you Natalie Cressman. Thank you. 
Aww. Yay! <laughs> Hi, how's it going? What's good. up, Natalie? How you doing? Hello. I'm good. You are nothing Hi, if not everyone. punctual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, punctual audio's working. Usually we have to be like, it, you're <laughs> muted, <laughs> you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> Nat, I'm Aaron. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. Um, and I'm Mel, one one third of our hosts. <laughs> And then we've got one more. And then and the final third. I'm Apple. Oh. Thank you for joining us today, Natalie. This this completes our, we keep saying the tour of the tab horn section. <laughs> it, this is amazing to have you to complete this. <laughs> I. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for getting me. I, I was wondering, where are you, Natalie? I'm in Chicago right now. Um in my hotel room and playing with Phil and friends tonight um, oh. and tomorrow night. Yay. So, that that is, know. that's so cool. <laughs> and you, that's part of the reason I wanted to talk to you. We're, um, we're going to be at Skull and Roses. Oh, great. Yeah. And playing with Phil and friends. I mean, he's such a huge musical force. And, and I wonder like, for you, you're used to playing with people that are that have that big of energy and history and all that behind them. How, how is that experience for you playing with him? Well, it's kind of like learning a new language, honestly, because with, you know, a few exceptions, the Grateful Dead catalog hasn't had a lot of horns in the mix. <laughs> and so it kind of feels like the first few shows, it was like, busting the door wide open into a universe that I hadn't explored yeah. before. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely, I get to stand right next to him <laughs> on stage. I feel like I'm soaking up, you know, some crazy history every time. And it's been really cool to kind of learn, you know, on the fly, learn on the job with this, you know, deep catalog of music that means so much to so many people. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's kind of like, a similar feeling to when I joined Trey's band when I was a lot younger of obviously this, you know, is a whole tradition that, you know, I didn't grow up with, but so many of these people did. And how do I play true to the style? How do I do my homework and come up prepared so that I can breathe new life into it, but with some kind of reference point to where this is all coming from. And I think Phil is really generous with his time and, you know, giving us moments to to shine throughout the night and and lead certain numbers, and um, he's just a gem of a human being, and it's, you know, it's a really nice feeling How? joining you know such a you know well reputed you know crew of people. Yeah. Um, but it feels like family. It feels like you know very inviting right away, and I think that's can be can be rare, and it's definitely unique and a blessing to have discovered that For sure. in this case. How do you prepare for something like that, for getting that phone call and like putting your, like you said, respect, your spin, also being, you know, like true to the music? Where do you start? Well, I think the thing that that kind of uh, connects us all is that we're all improvisers, whether right. we grew up studying jazz or, or studying the Grateful Dead, that's the the common thread sure. that connects us all. And so as much as it's important to, you know, learn the songs ahead of time, sometimes they're sending the song lists out, you know, this time I think it was less than 48 hours before the first gig. So oh, if it's a song I've never heard before, it's like I'm going to have a limited amount of time to internalize it, but I don't really have a heart attack because I know that really this is, it's a jumping off point for mm. improvisation and, so to trust my own musical intuition and my grounding and having really big ears on stage and reacting to what's happening, I know that I'm not going to um, totally step in it, most likely, you know. So <laughs> I think that's the thing that, that helps me prepare for it. It's just the years and years of being in the moment and reacting and responding to people on stage. It's really different than, say, growing up playing in an orchestra or even like yeah. a rock band where there's not such an emphasis on improvisation. You're just a horn section playing the same horn lines every night. Like, luckily... Jen, James and I have like a really shorthand method of communication where we can make stuff up on the fly, like in a heartbeat and the next measure already be playing it in three part harmony. So we've developed that over the years. And even if it's a 
unfamiliar song or unfamiliar territory, we have that to um, to kind of fall back on and, and it tends to work out all right. You, you know, I want to go back to something that you said too, like with Fish, Tab, The Grateful Dead, there's this musical universe that encapsulates the music, right? There's There's history, there's inside jokes, there's le- different language, there's, it's a whole thing, like... Each one of those yeah, is its, it's own. More than music. It's yeah, it's a and it that is a trip to me as a fan being part of that. But I always wonder from your perspective on the stage, like beyond the music, the culture of those things. What's your take on all of that? Oh wow. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of in awe of it, and I think that it's. It, I think what's great about it is that it just paints this. It's so much more than the music. The music it transcends the music. It's it's just a snapshot of just the human experience because right. so much about coming to hear these same songs years after years is that it transports you to a time and place, a different time and place, and maybe your youth or maybe the friends you met along the way. And you know that's something that I don't necessarily always feel playing on a jazz gig. Like there is some interaction with the audience, but it's not like, Oh, this is a whole culture. And I'm just, you know, yeah. dipping a, a, you know, my foot in it for the first time. So if there is something that's like really fulfilling about seeing the joy on people's faces and seeing how much weight there is to what we're doing, that's really different than anything I've done before. So I, you know, in a way it's cool. I mean, part of me is like, oh, well, I could have grown up that way. And then I could have been experiencing this from the beginning. But at the same time, it's cool now to have this appreciation and just be, you know, you know, it's, you know, we've been playing and touring a long time to be stunned and surprised by something on stage is kind of rare. And it's, it's cool to have those moments where I'm like, wow, everyone knows the lyrics yeah. better than I do. Like they've, <laughs> they've lived and their whole life. That's so it's cool. really cool. Yeah. And you know, the people along the way are so generous and open. I think it's just, I don't know, the times, types of people that show up to this kind of music tend to be really good people. So I've made some friends along the way. Um, and that's always a beautiful thing, too. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's such a big thing. And, and I know that like from, from the stage, you can't focus on that because that hinders what you're doing. You just kind of have to let it go and just do your thing and trust that everything is the way it should be. But like when we talked to Jen, I I had mentioned, um, you know, the Beacon Jams and the time that you all did that, it was such a medicinal thing for all of us. We were hurting, you know, as a community. It was hard. And to have that come out was such a, a balm for like our spirit and to make us feel connected to something that we had been missing for so long and to see you guys doing it again. It just, the whole thing was, it was a huge deal. And, and I wonder, I mean, I know how, what Jen said, but I, I, what's your take on that? Like, do you feel that coming back at you, even though there's nobody in the room Uh and you're just looking at comments on a screen? Yeah. um, Well, I think in the moment it was actually really hard to feel it. I mean, I did two weekends of it. So I guess by the second weekend, I had the days in between of like seeing on the Internet people and the comments helped for sure. It wasn't it didn't feel like we were just playing to a wall, but um, but it wasn't the same as a concert. However, even without a live audience and without that interplay that we're so used to in the scene, I would think from my perspective, I was, it was a balm for me to be playing music again, you know, not on my living room couch and just being able to do what I do again, after months and months of not being able to do it at all. It, for me, it was healing as well. Um, and then it, you know, just the charitable aspect of it. And then, yeah, just getting the videos of kids, you know, banging on pots and pans and, uh, you know, how, how it be- became like a family, um, you know, sit around the, the TV and, and, you know, join in on this together. It was a really heartwarming and important thing that helped us get by. Um, yeah. And so I, but I think in the moment it, you don't necessarily feel that right. when you're, you're playing with your <laughs> back to where the audience normally is to like a, brick wall basically so weird. and you get the comments from time to time <laughs> yeah like the stage setup was all all backwards so 
it didn't, yeah, it was like, it was really weird because they do this countdown, you know, and we're just on stage, at least for the first week, we were just on stage and there felt no, I didn't feel like there was any difference between like the 10 count and when we were live, like we were still just in the same space that we've been all week rehearsing and all of a sudden there's uh, thousands, tens of thousands of people listening. Um, so it was kind of surreal and didn't really sink in, but everyone was there until kind of after the fact. And it seems like too that for Tab, those moments of like, uh, I don't even know what you would call them, just those moments seem to be happening often lately, you know, like with the whole Taboos run and the ovation that James got and all of that, like, I can't even imagine what that feels like to have that wave of whatever coming at you standing on the stage. And I, I'm, we really loved the taboo shows. How was that for you, Nat? It was cool because there was just this, I mean, tab shows are always different every night anyway. It's just because right. there is that a lot of moments to improvise and collaborate, but having this kind of premise of like, okay, at some point they're going to come up and what are we going to do this time? That's going to top what we did last time. It created a lot of nice dynamics to the tour. And it wasn't like we were showing up to do the same show every night. It was always like long sound checks, you know, working on the material, making sure it was all going to work. And I love that because, you know, it's really rare to be in the same band for 13 years and still be trying to like, you know, push things a little further forward and, and make things that much better, or, you know, create these little, you know, Easter eggs for the audience. Like that is really unique to just a few bands, I think. And and I think Trey is one of the prime examples of how much he cares and how much he works around the clock to, to surprise and thrill his audience and having the, you know, the goose um, collaborations was definitely in line with that. And so it was kind of fun to wake up and, you know, either get an email or a text or something with like, okay, how about this? And like, same with the Billy Strings thing, you know, that was a fun curveball as well. And, you know, I think it's so rare to be in a horn section and, and get to, you know, be in a position where you're growing and learning and stretching the boundaries of what you can do after many, many years of being in the same lineup, basically. Um, you know, I think that's pretty unique. Can I ask you a silly question? <laughs> it's gonna sure. it's gonna be off the wall, but whatever. I don't care. Um, you know, when on the last night of the taboo shows, like you guys all did the conga line thing and Trey had the plastic torch <laughs> and that whole thing, and the whole like passing the torch, whatever that's going on online when people see all that. I, I what do you think about all that? Like, is that, is that a thing? Is, I mean, do you think that's conscious or, or is that just like, we like these guys, so we're going to have them play with us. What, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think Trey's like, I'm not dead yet. You know, like, right. that body, like, <laughs> like he's still prime, right? So I don't think he's trying to pass any torches, but <laughs> that being said, there's room for everyone to do their thing. Um, yeah. Like, I just think Trey's like not, not retiring anytime soon so i don't think the torch is being passed but it's more like let me let me like support these other guys that are doing cool things and you know try and impart my his decades and decades of wisdom and help yeah. these young guys you know um th i think it's all very inclusive like there's room for several torches to be passed or no torches <laughs> to be passed at all right we're just lighting up the stage it's, at this point yeah, it's, less, it's less passing the torch and me using my torch to light your campfire <laughs> I think that's that exactly. Yeah. I like that so much better. Yeah. So, Natalie, can we talk about your beginnings in music? Because that is super interesting to me. Because you've had such a, you said you've been with Tap for thirteen years. That's a huge chunk of your career. Like, how did that even, you know, enter into your life and and your your beginnings with the love of music? You know. Yeah. Um, well, I've always. Music has been a really big part of my life since the very beginning because my parents are musicians and it was always a more than like a career it was like a community. Mm. So I think that luckily stayed the case when yeah. I joined Tab. 
Um, so I, I don't know. I think the, the kind of music that my parents played was already kind of unique and very expansive. Like they, um, specialized in Latin jazz and Brazilian music Oh wow! as well as jazz and, you know, all sorts of styles. They sang, they played with a, a world music ensemble, um, doing music in Hindu. Like it was always just oh, wow. a wide open um, spectrum of things that I got exposed to as a kid. And some of my first gigs were sitting in with them or tagging along to gigs and singing a little bit or playing a little bit. So I didn't come up in the same world that I'm in now, mm-hmm. but I came up with a similar aesthetic of like, you know, there's so much great music and really the only two types of music there are is like good music and bad music. And even that's kind of subjective at that yeah. point. But, um, so I, you know, I was a pretty, and I, I didn't really start specializing in one direction until I had to decide to study in college and I wanted to study music. And so I went to a jazz conservatory and that was the only time where I was like, kind of saying, I'm going to choose this genre and really focus on that. However, that same year that I moved to New York to go to college, Trey called me and I got started with tab. So in between classes and finals, I was rehearsing and touring. And um, thank God, honestly, because I think that it kept me true to my original ethos, which was try and learn a lot from all directions and, you know, don't don't try and act like one kind of music is supreme or better than anything else. So I think it kind of saved me from from um, losing sight of all the other great music that I had grown up with. What is it with him um, taking people out of school? <laughs> I know. Well, I graduated. I stayed with it. It was luckily like Tab has always been something that it's like a few short tours a year and I was able to get like an artistic leave of, of, of absence and did my finals and did everything from the road. So that's so cool. I have to ask too, like what drew you to the trombone? Well, my dad made it look pretty cool. He's an amazing trombone player. (laughs) That's cool. I grew up like tagging along to, you know, his gigs and didn't seem like a nerdy band instrument to me. (laughs) You know, he was rocking out with these salsa bands and then, when I was nine, he started playing and touring with Santana. Oh, um, shit. So okay. it was like, oh, I want to do that. Like, that sounds like a lot of fun to go around the world and play trombone. Um, and my mom's a singer. So I kind of just ended up following in the family business, more or less. <laughs> I was, there's a few videos out there that I found of you playing with your dad. And the smiles on both of your faces is just amazing to see you playing with him. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we don't get to do it every day. And so it's always really special when, when it happens. And we actually, when I'm not on the road, we play together every week. We have this like uh, oh, trombone that's... quartet thing in, in San Francisco and we meet up and play quartets with two other guys. So we, we get to do it a little bit more than when I lived on the East coast, but that's it is so still cool. really special. When when it, it happens. I was, I was going to switch gears here for a second too. First of all, we all want to congratulate yeah. you and Ian. Congratulations. Con- on- <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, look at that smile, man. Yeah. <laughs> right well, on. It is, it's kind of magical because you two have been creating music for a while now and like watching the videos and listening to the music, like your courtship kind of played out in front of everybody and the music you make together <laughs> is just beautiful. I mean, I don't know Portuguese, but even just hearing the way you sing your voice and everything. I'm just wondering if you could talk a little about your, your collaboration and where it's taken you now. Yeah, no, um, no, I'm really, really thankful to have found Ian as a collaborator and, and partner in crime in life. Cause yeah, we've just, I think we bring out the best in each other musically and creatively. And um, it's uh, just limitless inspiration working with him um, and, crafting the songs together and and making the the music and playing shows together also it's just mm. like I can't think of a a better way to spend my time so um but yeah so we've speaking of being in the family he's like recording with my mom and dad right now as we speak oh, on wow. her that's awesome album. And, yeah so he's always been kind of a family friend actually started working with him through my mom you know several years ago but um and then she took me to this Brazil 
Brazilian music camp that he teaches at, and I was his guitar student. <laughs> and uh, oh. we started collaborating, like I'd write lyrics to some of his songs, and then, you know, it all just kind of took off from there, like from about, yeah, six or seven years ago till now. That's and yeah, now having two albums out together, we get to tour together and play shows together. So it's just the best. I love it. Oh, well, it, like that's the, think uh, about like and cooking together. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, oh uh, yeah, lots of, lots of cooking too. Yeah. <laughs> Usually as a musician, you have to like leave your family behind to go tour and travel. And so having, being able to make an album with not just your husband now, but like your parents too. And like, that seems like your life. So you, you never have to leave anybody behind is the point, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's really nice. I mean, and that it's weird because, you, you know, obviously it's touring is a grueling kind of situation, you know, driving from city to city and just kind of, you know, not having much time other than to like sleep, eat and play. Yeah. But funny when I'm on tour with Ian, I can kind of trick myself into feeling like I'm on vacation because it's just like, That's, yeah. you know, we're just kind of hanging out together. All the downtime becomes like quality time and we we're big foodies. We love to eat. So it's like, well, where should we eat lunch? Like it's, it feels like a date, you know, it's yeah. not like, you know, the same thing as when you're touring with like, you know, six different people and you have to all come to a consensus about what you're going to spend your off time doing. So it's pretty great. Congratulations on that. That's like the, the highest form of quality of life because again, like, I know. right. <laughs> That's it's just if we could just keep it going, I'll be so happy. Yeah. Well, you're in a good trajectory to keep yeah. it going. <laughs> I don't see, like you said, Trey's not stopping anytime soon, and I don't see you retiring anytime soon. So I mean Oh no. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing this for a long time. Just as long as we can keep the gigs getting booked and tours getting routed, we'll we'll be continuing on to do oh. it. And and yeah, we just have so much more material that we got we have a wealth of stuff that we just have to find time to get into the studio and record so that we can keep putting out music. Wow. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I saw her, like your, yours and Eden's relationship is, it's so cute to see play out. And I heard too, that he did, like you mentioned being foodies. I saw like when he proposed, he like did the classic, like the ring and the dessert at your favorite restaurant. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was pretty impressive. And like the fact that we were we were like on vacation together for you know that whole well, 10 days and it was like the end of the trip and i had no idea what was coming so really? Was really good job keeping it a surprise it, yeah wow i mean <laughs> that like mel said as far as life goals are concerned that it seems like you've nailed it like you hit the lottery yeah you get to be with the people that you Not love the most I, I, all the time. Yeah. You're doing like you're doing the thing that you love to do. People are loving mm -hmm. what you're up to. And like you just said, you're you get to like when we talk to musicians, a lot of the time they're like, oh, my God, the road. It's so hard. It's so miserable. You know, whatever. And you're like, I, I'm with my husband. Like, a day. like, yeah. So <laughs> that's I, I, to me. I, I see that as like what you're putting out into the world coming back to you tenfold. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I hope so. I'm, you know, having a blast. And I think it's one of the things that makes playing music so rewarding is that it's not like you have this, um, like, what's the word? Categor uh, compartmentalized work life and regular life. Like right. it's all one thing. And so we actually like on our days off, like choose to spend time making more music and, <laughs> wow. and continuing. And that's really, you know, really unique. And there's some, you know, the drawbacks being the road can be tough and right. traveling is exhausting. But um, in, in general, I just feel really grateful to just have a space to be doing this at all. And and loving what I do is is a blessing. So I'm always I super happy about that. I, I'm curious to uh, trom trombone is one of my favorite in instruments. Honestly, I, I played in seventh and eighth grade in band, <laughs> you know, but my, I was my mom and dad, you know, Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller to this day, still swing music, big band music. It's so beautiful to me. I, I look on, I just wondering how it feels. You, you know, I look at, you look at lists of like top trombonists, you're listed not very far behind like Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, 
like the greats. Dude, how does that make you feel? Um, well, sometimes I feel very unworthy of that. Like, (laughs) um, I don't really believe it. I don't buy into (laughs) it, but it is nice to be recognized. Um, but I think, you know, maybe I'll get used to that one day, but it's just, yeah, I just kind of feel like a bit unworthy of being on that list, but um, you deserve it. Yeah, I think we all have a little bit of that, but, um, but no, it's great. My heroes are, you know, on those downbeat poles and just getting to be in that category with them and represent for women too, because there yeah. aren't a lot of women on that list. I feel very empowered. Um, yeah. With, with everything that happened during um, COVID, and like you, you said, you know, doing Beacon Jams was, at least I'm not sitting on my couch playing my instrument. I'm out doing my thing. Do you think that the time that we had where we couldn't go out and do anything, do you think that helped you? Do you think that that time helped you hone your craft? I absolutely do. And sometimes I feel, Ian and I talk about this, like we feel guilty about admitting it, but the co- the COVID pandemic was actually like a really good thing for us. We, you know, became closer as a couple, closer as musical collaborators. We finally had time to approach music like we did as kids, like, you know, lit up about some song that we heard. Oh, we have time right now to go learn it, you know, and it's it's a blessing and a curse to be busy, you know, gigging because sometimes you just get caught up and I call it like the hamster wheel of mm-hmm just preparing for the next gig and then that gig's over and you have to learn another set of music that you might never play again. And you never have time to breathe and reflect and just play whatever moves you in the moment. Mm-hmm. And so COVID it's a terrible pandemic, but it slowed us down to being able to get back to that place of discovery and learning without an agenda. And that, you know, I think is, and you know, trying to, I'm trying to like preserve a piece of that because I think it's so important to like thrive and, feel good as a person to give yourself that time to be creative without any kind of end goal in place. So for us, it was great. We, you know, we had songs to keep us busy. We were recording at my dad's studio once a week and writing in between. And it, it gave us, you know, the structure. So we weren't like drowning in uh, uncertainty, but, Mm -hmm. you know, we just were trying to use, make the most of the time we had together. And honestly, like when it, when things came back, it was like, Oh, I miss those days where we could just like <laughs> have a whole day to record at my dad's house, like make dinner, stay over, nothing to do the next day. You know, those, those, that aspect was really cool. And I'm glad we got to make an album that way because who knows when that'll be possible again. Yeah. It, I, I know what you mean about like, you don't want to, say it too loud that like it was good it was good for us like it was the same for us like we when it first started we were like oh crap we have a music pod live music podcast and there's no live music like we're done but we quickly realized yeah. that it was good like we were getting to talk to the artists and they were home and they were relaxed they weren't on the road and everybody wanted to talk so we got time with people we probably wouldn't have gotten time with and it made us And I'll bet for you too, like it made me personally take stock in why I was doing what I was doing in the first place. Like personally, do I care? Do I want to keep doing it? Does it matter? Is it doing anything for anybody else? Like all these big life questions that I wouldn't have paid attention to had I just been on the hamster wheel, like you said, all that time. Were were you doing that too? (laughs) Like just taking stock of the whole thing and giving you a renewed appreciation for it? What is a city without its music? The legacy of the New York Philharmonic is incredible. Nearly two centuries of history. That's a lot of music and a lot of stories. I was sitting on stage for the very first time thinking, I can't quite believe this is happening. Join me, Jamie Bernstein, as we explore the history of the New York Philharmonic. It's the NY Phil story made in New York, a podcast about a city, its people, and their orchestra. Listen wherever you get podcasts. Yeah, I mean, I think it forced us all to dig down deep and work through some stuff that maybe hadn't seen the light of day before. Mm-hmm. Um, when, yeah, when you're just in it and you're not thinking about it and you're just working, you know, it's 
easy not to like reflect, but I definitely had some reflections of like, you know, what, what's really meaningful and what stuff I can let go and not worry about as much. And it was, yeah, it was also affirming because, you know, sometimes you get, um, you take for granted the, the situation of being out and playing for an audience and that energy you get back. It's so priceless. And sometimes it's just, at least before the pandemic, it was kind of like a given that, you know, you'd get that reaction, you'd have that interplay. Um, but taking that all away for like a couple years, really, because live streams didn't have quite that same feeling and then right. bringing it back, you appreciate it so much more. Yeah. Um, so I'll never take that for granted again. But I also realized that I don't need to be performing to find like inner peace in my musical world. Like for me, just learning and growing and, you know, that was enough. Like, I didn't feel like I, I, I it took me a while to feel that way. Cause at first I was just like, Oh my God, no gigs. I'm like at the, the peak of like my, you know, this time in my life is like when you're supposed to be out and getting it. And we lost, you know, two years of that, that sucks. But, and then, you know, working through that and realizing that like, I'm still growing. I think I got better as a, as a musician. I think I learned a lot as a arranger and, uh, you know, the, producer on the record. And so just, you know, to kind of be able to be okay with the pause and realize that learning and growing is happening mm. regardless of what it might look like in the moment. Can you talk to us about the, the relationship between you, Jen and James, like, you know, because yes, it's yeah. tab, but now you've, you know, you're with Phil sometimes. And so like that, it's a very tight knit group and you, t you all seem to have such a deep, profound connection. And so we've, like Aaron said, we were able to, or Apple said, we were able to talk to James, we were able to talk to Jen, but to have you on the other side to kind of complete that, you know, that little, that circle, what is it like to have that and and what what is it you know what is it like and what is it yeah well it's kind of like when you have a really close friend that you finish each other's sentences we, we finish each other's musical sentences yeah. like not very much has to be said for us to understand what the other person is trying to communicate and it's 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 rare I don't have that at least in the same strong way with anybody else and I play with lots of other amazing horn players but I it's a testament to their incredible skills and our camaraderie as a yeah. trio, as we call each other, like tab siblings. Like we really, <laughs> I really treat, I really feel like they're my older brother and sister and they've got my back Aww. on stage and off stage. And, and yeah, there's, it's just like, it, it's, uh, there's nothing quite like it. Just the way that we're able to play off each other and communicate with each other, usually like without even having to say anything verbally, like it can just be like Jen sings me a line and then sings James the same line. And then like four bars later, we're in with like a complete horn line, you know, and wild. not everyone is wired that way. I think they're, they have freaky good ears, <laughs> you know, and yeah. we're, we're very quick about it. And it's part of why we are starting to get hired as a section because there's this cohesion that just comes from years and years of, of, of playing together, but also just like being together off the stage, you know, um, being in a, on a tour bus together, it's a bond that's pretty special. And <laughs> so being, I think it's been a decade now that Whoa. all three of us have been working together. It's a long time. And so we've gotten, it's just, yeah, it's just lightning fast to the way we communicate and we have a blast and it's like, no matter what the musical situation is, like we, you know, make each other feel comfortable. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's, that's what, one of my favorite things too, is you're all, you're all, you know, well known as the horn section, but beyond that you, you put the horn down and your voices. Yeah. And we could do that. Yeah. Sing. We do a similar thing with the vocals. Yeah. I think obviously you would answer that the way that you did, but I have to tell you that after meeting the three of you, I think it's something more. Mm -hmm. I think it's something more than ear or, um, simpatico playing. I, you individually, the three of you are gem human beings, mm -hmm. like really good, wonderful people without the music. So when you take people that are mm -hmm. like good human beings and you, 
that have talent and you put them together, something magical is going to happen. Do you know what I mean? And to me, that's what we as, as fans are experiencing is that, that love that's there coming out Mm -hmm. through, through the form of music, through the form of frequency and sound is coming and hitting us. And that's what we're responding to. And I think that is part of the genius of people like Trey to be able to see that and then put those pieces together. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I yeah, he it's crazy. I just got goosebumps by the way, was what you said. Yeah, <laughs> that really hit. Um yeah. No, and I I think, you know, I think the audience can feel that. Mm-hmm. I mean, to For some sure. degree. Like the warmth and the love and the respect. And And yeah, I mean, the older I get, the more I care about playing with good human beings than like someone that's a hot shot player, but maybe isn't very nice or doesn't treat you respectfully. It it becomes so much more important at a certain level about how you feel about the person and whether you, you know, can feel that love and mutual respect. And it makes it the music making so much easier when you have that there. Mm -hmm. Um, Conversely, it makes the vibe feel very weird when it's missing. So I think mm-hmm. Trey has always cared about that so much. And I think it's part of why he allowed an 18 year old freshman in college to join the band. Cause there were probably other people that on paper were more qualified or more, you know, experienced in what he was asking of me, but he liked the vibe and we clicked and everyone clicked. And that again, allows us to just elevate the music that much higher to have that feeling of, of, of trust and love and, and mutual respect. It's so important to the creative process. Yeah. How did he know about you at 18 years old? Well, so the way it came down, so my dad did a tour with Trey, like his last um, tab tour before the big break. Um, I don't know what year that was, like 2005 maybe, or six, I don't know, whenever the last little run was. Um, and so when he put the band back together in 2009, um, I think it was Trey or Trey's manager called my dad. And at the time he was still touring with Santana and it had become like pretty full time. So the dates didn't work. And so I think Trey or Patrick asked him, do you have someone you recommend? And my dad said, well, there is somebody just moved to New York. And he started to list all these great skills and by the way, she happens to be 18 years old and she's my daughter. <laughs> and I think that a lot, of, a lot of people would have been like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, Jeff, nice and job. Right? Thought, like you're trying to get your daughter high. That's cute. But <laughs> like they actually had me send them like examples of my playing. And then they try to talk to Jen and Jen was playing a really informal gig on the Upper East Side. And the audition was me just showing up and sitting in with her and we had never met before and didn't know each other. And I just came in and hopped up on something and sat in and like hung out all night at the gig, like getting to know her and having a blast. And um, she called Trey that night, like super late and said, okay, we, we found the, found the girl. Like she's it. What? She's on the vet in me. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's even better because that's who you're literally going to be playing with. Like, of course you're playing with Trey, but like, that's going to be your sister for however long, yeah. like, wow. Uh, yeah. The section leader. And it's cool. Cause it's like, she shows you how much Trey trusts Jen to like, know if it's going to work or not. Yeah. And actually all the other newer additions to tab have been kind of like a group suggestion. Like oh. Jen and I had worked with James and like when that seat was open, Jen said, you know, James Casey would be great. So like Desron also has been playing in Jen's band for years. We've all played in Jen's band before and played with Des and he was like a very logical, like member of the family to bring in. So it's, I think that's part of why it feels different. It's not like some like, you know, Hollywood MD putting together the super band. It's like family first. That's what I was going to say. This, what you're describing to me is a family. Yeah. I mean, that's how we are. You know, we all live together and, and, not just anybody gets into the groove. You know what I mean? You, there's certain the people that you meet. Yeah, the circle <laughs> of trust. Yeah, there's certain people that you meet them and you just know. You're like, oh, that 
that guy, we're going to be friends forever. That's, and to have that with a group of musicians is really kind of beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. That, no, it's so great. Well, and I, I think that there's one thing to like, kind of tie it all together around the band. It's like, everyone's very, like has a lot of sensitivity to each other and awareness. So we're, no one's like stepping out in front, like in a vacuum, like this is my solo or this is my moment. It's always like this feeling of everyone being attuned to each other's um, parts. And, and I think that awareness is kind of what makes it work so well. Mm. And you guys have been going through some heavy stuff lately with James and, you know, yeah. you can't, that's not easy. So I think that having that um, family aspect of what you're doing is probably pivotal for him, I would imagine. And for you guys, too, to be able to support yeah. each other through this, you know. Yeah, it's like support yeah, on and yeah. off stage, yeah. you know. Were you going to say something? Mm-hmm. Well, that's totally. what I was going to say. We, we've seen tabs, seen you all several times now and. I mean, all bands have that connection of looking at, but the way, I mean, that's a lot of people on stage and to see the way everybody stares at like you when you're doing a solo, the support and just the looks that are going on on stage and the way everybody reads each other, it is very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said earlier, that's, I think what we're picking up on. Yeah. I did have a question about something because obviously, you know, musicians and singers and everything, you're disciplined and stuff. But I saw somewhere that at at one point, um, but because of injury, you were you were doing ballet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a different kind of discipline. I came up doing that. Yeah. It was intense. Yeah. All the way through, like most of high school, I was juggling that, too, with the music. Um, and yeah, it makes, it makes all the discipline for, for being a musician feel like nothing. <laughs> uh, only, okay, that's what I was imagine. wondering. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I have to ask too about Portuguese. Mm-hmm. Was that something that you already knew when you met your husband or is that something that has come out of that relationship? Um, for the most part out of the relationship, I mean, my mom, sing Brazilian music and speaks Portuguese. So I grew up around it, like, but I didn't learn the language until me and Ian started dating. I, I, I have always loved Brazilian music. It's been like a big passion of mine for forever. Um, but I would just learn certain songs phonet- phonetically. Like I just, you know, learn the sounds of the words and kind of look up a rough translation of what the song was about and sing it. And then as partially because Ian and I were traveling to Brazil and seeing his family and although most of them spoke English, it's just, you want to start when you love a culture and you, you know, you're spending time down there, you want to learn. It's just kind of natural. And his mom's a great Portuguese teacher. So like that also super helped. Um, So that's part of it is just connecting with, with real human beings about it. Right. Making me want language. Um, But the other part was like, once we started working on Ian's music and a lot of the songs are in Portuguese. It just felt like in order to really own this, I got to, I got to learn like just how I approach, like learning about, you know, fish or learning about James Brown or, you know, it's like you want to, when you, when you're called upon to do something, um, especially in the public eye, you want to do it with a deference to the tradition and the culture that it's coming from. So I just, you know, wanted to feel authentic. And so I started studying. And funny enough, Ian hasn't been super <laughs> helpful with that <laughs> part of the, the learning because he's, he's a, you know, he's been in the States since he was eight. And we started, you know, our relationship. I didn't speak any Portuguese. So our language is English, you know, and now he only wants to talk to me in Portuguese if there's like, it happens naturally if there's one other person that's a a Brazilian in the room, then the language switches to Portuguese. But one on one, I have to work really hard, or we have to be somewhere where he's trying to tell me something that he doesn't want other people to overhear. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> <laughs> That's when it goes to Portuguese. But otherwise, it's I can mostly credit his mom and the pandemic for how fluent I've gotten in Portuguese because wow. we spent a lot of time with her in a little bubble, and we just spoke all Portuguese because she was that that extra person that oh, made the so language. 
<laughs> wow. Portuguese is so hard. Well, that's but it's awesome. It's like, Aaron and I, we um, we went to Fish Mexico um, a few weeks back, and prior to going, we started Duolingo to start speaking Spanish to have you know kind of like an upper hand, and and it's actually my first language. But my when my grandma passed away, my mom stopped speaking Spanish, so I I lost it, you know. So a lot of what I know. It's um, kind of, rem- it's remembering, it jogs my memory, but I was like always scared to speak because I had lost a lot of my vocabulary. But once my mm-hmm. partner and I started talking, it like opened up this whole new world of like a way to communicate in a language that is, I get, I would say foreign to both of us, because like I said, it was, you know, it kind of like left my life and I, I'm, I'm accepting it back. And like to be able to have, um, well, you and Ian already have it with music, but even like another secondary language to kind of speak together and what a bond that creates, you know, like it, it, it makes it seem like you're the only two people in the world. You know what I mean? Like just speaking that language and yeah, a little bit romantic, a little bit like secretive, a little bit fun. And that's just like such a cool thing to be able to not just have the music, not just have English, but now Portuguese and this, you know, like these multiple multi-layered um ways of of loving your partner and and having connection with your partner and what a cool feeling that must be oh yeah it's great and you already kind of know from everything i've said i'm kind of like a nerd that loves to learn so like learning this language was like another outlet for me for that and um and yeah just being able to go to brazil and like when i first visited everyone was speaking to me in english and then now ian's friends are all like wow you're like fluent now like i don't even have to speak like we could just talk in Portuguese. Aww. Like it feels really good Aww. to like have, you know, to, to have people see the growth. And yeah. like, I went to this wedding of a friend of his and like, no one talked to me in English pretty much the whole time. And it was like, cool. I had like a real Brazilian wedding. Wow. That's awesome. so cool. Well, okay. <laughs> What's your favorite Brazilian food? Oh God. That's so hard. I, well, okay. One of your favorites. This is like, yeah, it's kind of important, but one of my favorites is this, um, it's from Bahia. It's called Acarajé. And it's like basically like kind of like a falafel. It's like fried black eyed peas that are the buns. And then they fill it with like this really delicious spicy paste and dried shrimp and um, a salad of cucumbers and tomatoes and onions. And it's like out of this world. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a flavor bomb and um, something that, I, I there's actually a couple people that make it in the Bay Area. So like maybe once a year I get some, but especially when we go to Brazil, it's like I can't leave without having that. That's the, that's there's, the there's, thing. there's a very strong runner up, which is. Yeah, there's always going to be more than one. Right. Takaka, which is this soup from the north of Brazil, from Pará. Um, and it's got the, um, the tucupi. It's like this broth with this um, kind of kelp. And this this um, this herb called jambu that makes your mouth kind of numb as you're eating it. What? <laughs> it's crazy, but it's yeah, it's like an anesthetic, and they actually have a a kind of cachaça that's infused with it, and that also is crazy because as you're drinking the cachaça, the jambu kind of numbs your mouth. Um, well, that's like a culinary that also comes experience. With, like, shrimps and <laughs> not describing it that well, but it's just like like it tastes like the earth it tastes like brazil and it's like there's nothing here that is anything like wow that's why i asked we have we have (laughs) we have a friend in in we came we moved from vegas to portland oregon six years ago seven 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 seven. and uh we have a really good family friend that's portuguese from brazil and uh we would go to their house for dinner and the food was the weirdest, best stuff ever. Like, and the desserts, man, <laughs> the Brazilian dessert is a whole like crazy world all its own. And if, if I lived in Brazil, I'd be like 800 pounds. Like that food is different <laughs> than anywhere on the planet. And I know you being a foodie, like that's and, oh, you, yeah. and you guys get into cooking all that stuff too like i saw that you went and like bought the special pot and like all you know what i mean you get into it yeah 
yeah. Oh yeah, we have one of those. Yeah, panelas, the um, the clay pots, and yeah, we make mukeka a lot. <laughs> um, so good. That stew that we demoed in the video is like classic. Um, yeah, no, it's a great. I mean, amazing food, and usually like a simple kind of amount of ingredients, like very doable. Right. Which is cool. Um, Oh, speaking of Portland, though, I'm going to be up there in two weeks. If you I guys saw are that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, are you going to be in Eugene on the 22nd, I thought? And then Portland? Yeah, Eugene on the 22nd, Hood River on the 23rd, and then Portland on the 24th and 25th. We're doing two nights at the 1905. So, oh, yeah, wow. if you guys are around. Oh, come, yeah. Love totally come, come see you. I'm sure. see you so excited. So right, right before we got on, I, I did see those dates and got super stoked. I was like, what are the chances? Like, that is so great. That'll, that'll really complete it, too, because we got to meet Jen in person. We got to, you know, meet James in person at the Peach Festival last year. So we'll get to meet you, too. <laughs> well, we're going to we're going to see her at Skull and Roses, too. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But this is even sooner. Yeah, this is sooner. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to wait that long. That's true. Oh. Um, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so awesome. I have, okay. What's you, one of your favorite things about touring with Trey, touring with Phil and touring for yourself? Mm. Oh, man. Well, I think touring with Trey is just like, we, I know the band so well. It's like, I, I, my family got bigger when I joined the band. It's like all those fun times on the tour bus where we're just being goofy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Just silly stuff. Like those little moments, I live for that. I mean, obviously the music on stage is really fulfilling and life affirming too, but it's like when you know someone that well and you've been around for, you know, in that same environment for so long, it's like, it's like a family reunion. Aww. And I love that. That's and we dope. don't get to do it all that often. So it does feel precious. Like those, everyone kind of crammed in the front lounge of the bus, making food, talking, you know, yeah. giggling. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the playing with Phil, what's really fun is getting to bring this different kind of color into this music that's so well established. You know, it's really cool every once in a while, you know, we'll be in some jam and we'll have made up some part that's kind of we come in really strong and you just see Phil's head turn and the smile that Aww. lights up his face is just priceless. Like that view wow. of, you know, having an impact and and bringing something fresh that you know is obviously a, being approved of by the goat you know yeah, yeah, totally. should, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very cool um and then touring with my i think you know just the kind of what we touched on touring with my project with ian it just feels like in a way the most authentic representation of who I am like it's so stripped down it's so gentle it's like I'm bearing my soul in a different way than is possible in these bigger venues with yeah. this louder you know a bigger band and a louder setup so I just feel like it feels really soothing to me to be able to get that soft and that subtle and have this like really intimate connection with Ian and then have other people brought in along for it is I think really special and you know those kind of shows where there's like this hush in the crowd or like you go for something and you can hear someone like sigh or like Aww. you know like just the the nature of the shows makes makes it just feel very special to be sharing this music and you know it's you know in a different language but it kind of transcends that sometimes and people feel touched by it and that's like what I live to do with music mm. is to make people feel good make people feel emotions period and um, and yeah, then the, just the touring, being able to tour with my best friend, you know, and, and have it not feel like work most of the time is such a blessing. That's really heartwarming, Natalie, that I, I can feel your love for Ian. I can feel your love for your brothers and sisters, you know, in tab, I can feel your love and respect for like Phil. And I just want you to like, think about something, you know, Phil's been doing this basically his entire life and so for him to have a new experience on stage that's a huge yeah. huge deal you know and the fact that the three of you can come in as such a close-knit group and create newness in something that is 
needs it. You know, everyone loves those, that music and everyone is, you know, it's like personal to everyone, but to have fresh air underneath it, literally with all of you, like that's what the horn section, it's air. It's bringing fresh air into that. And I just want to thank you for upping that, um, every experience that you're bringing, like you have such a freshness to you and, and hearing about your parents, you know, upbringing and all of that stuff. It just really helps to, um, give a better idea of, of who is bringing the music to us. And I'm just really grateful. And thank you so much for spending time with us. And even more so I'm excited to see you in a couple weeks and in our neck of the woods to bring your softness and, and that like, the, I, the, the type of music that you two are doing together is exactly my speed. Yep. I love that. I, I, it's something that like, I love flamenco music so much too. And one oh, of my yeah. best experiences is um, listening to going to a concert in a listening room and he, and not being able to applaud, but only being able to emote and hear. And that is something that I'm like, I love so much. So just thank you for your diversity and your craft and like the sweetness and the tenderness you put into everything and the love of learning. Cause it really transcends the music. It really does. And music's your tool, but like you're really putting yourself out there. And I just want to say thank you for doing that and all of it. And and also I have to say too, thanks for hanging out with us. Because you don't yeah. you don't have to do this stuff, man. You know you could you could easily say no and pass. And that, that I want you to know that it's appreciated. And and this oh. is this is awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's I mean I knew just based on the back and forth that it was going to be a great um, <laughs> great chat. But I appreciate everything you guys have said and for having me. And looking forward to to meeting you in person. Yeah. And, <laughs> out there yeah yeah if if when we're at skull and roses if you want if you have a few minutes let's sit down and talk sure okay. yeah cool should I, i'll be coming yeah i think i think we'll have that whole day there hopefully so okay cool we'll get a chance we'll to hang out about it all right all right yeah. enjoy the show yeah. tonight yeah well thank you guys so much i will Aww. so great meeting you all See thank you, in a you couple natalie weeks. take care <laughs> natalie okay bye. sounds bye. good bye, bye. Aww. Re- Wow, man. I thought it was one of the sweetest smiles ever. You can literally see how in love she is with her man when she talks about yep. him. Yep. Th- that's talk about like honeymoon phase or newlywed. Well, like that, I, it's like you could like cut it and put it in a sandwich. <laughs> you got to be a weird sandwich. <laughs> you got to go watch the videos now because it's like, it's like people have said like about I've like, seen like, like what couple, Tedeschi but, trucks, yeah. like oh, they're like yeah. making love on. Watching some of their videos of them before, it's like should should I should, should I be, be watching, watching this? Like, like it's so beautiful, That's so cute, and the looks that are being exchanged between them, it it's it's so heavy. Imagine and cool. when we finally get the chance to play together. I know. It's gonna be that made me really want to do that more. It's gonna like be I've dope. I've always since I even got interested, I was like that'd be so cool to be able to play music with you. But like even more so now, it it's exciting and it makes me feel like. I can't wait to be proficient enough to create something loving in musical form. It's going to be dope. Because what we do here, we're creating love here. She felt it. James felt it. Mm -hmm. Jen felt it. You know, if we talk to Trey, he'd feel it. Wait, wait, wait. When we talk to Trey. When we talk to Trey. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so to kind of evolve out of talk and into another language, like I was saying, that's exciting. And you know, when you already, um, if when your dreams have already been fulfilled and you're like, well, what else is there? Like we were talking with Andy, what else is there? There's this a whole th- world. This is another thing for me. Like this, that is another thing for me. What else is there? Like making music with my husband and bringing new kind of love out into the public. We got to write a song in Spanish together. Español, oh, baby. Oh shit, man. See, si. make music sobre la mesa the- <laughs> <laughs> on the table. <laughs> it's, I was, at the end there, I was gonna put you on the spot. But what is that you wanted me to say to Natalie in Portuguese? Oh, fish boom. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me earlier, like you should go out, you should say that right away. I said when yeah, we get on with that, like, you what should does say that fish mean? boom. I 
was like, don't worry, it, it's cool. You, should just, you definitely just don't want to say that to Natalie. Well, I mean, she'd probably crack up. Yeah, she probably would yeah. crack up. Yeah. It, means, it means, did you fart, I think, in Portuguese. Something about farting. Yeah. Um, you know, the, we, I said it to her, but I want to repeat this so that it's, it's out there even more. This completing our uh, conversations with the tab horn section has really shown me what Trey's real superpower is. Bringing wow. people together. And it's not playing the guitar. It is not playing the guitar. That's one of them. It's like facilitating yeah. human beings. Yep. <laughs> it's like seeing potential in somebody and knowing that they would click with someone else and putting those things together to make something greater than the sum of its parts. And then and, and in the meantime, getting to kick back and watch it happen. Yeah. Watch the incubator work and create the relationship that they have now after a, over a decade. Yeah. It's like, you know, Superman doesn't just fly. He has super strength. He has x-ray vision. He can shoot laser beams out of his eyes. All kinds of things. Yeah. So I guess I should have used a Jedi for the metaphor, but whatever. I'm a nerd, and you guys are all nerds out there, so just deal with yeah, it. Yeah, we get it. There's many nerd avenues to get to it. <laughs> but, you know, the last thing I said to her it was so, I really meant every word of it as far as, like, with Phil, you get somebody like a Bobby or a Phil or a Trey that have been doing music their entire life, yeah. and for them to have a new wind beneath their wings, their musical wings, what a freaking cool thing that must be for that. Yeah, that's a major accomplishment. It when they, is. With people that have been there, done that with most things, and then to get that smile. Like, like oh, wow. shit. You know, like, dang. And, like, what a cool thing for Phil to do. Like, hey, tab section, I want you all to be with me. Let's do this. Don't you think, though, that that's the part of the appeal for a musician like Trey, Phil, Bobby, whatever, to play improvisational music is to not have it be the same all the time. Even if you're yeah. playing the same songs, like every night is different, no matter what you're that's, always that keeps it of fresh. course, of course that's true. But like, there's also like special things that are different, you know, like if you've never had horn section oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you bring in that, like, yeah, of course, minus the horn section every night is different. Sure. You sing it different. You have a different tempo, you add different effects, whatever, but then you add an entire new tool or a new modality, a new element. Right. And that, yeah. And that blows your mind. You're like, Oh shit. Like that's where we can go with this I'm, too. I'm super stoked to see them at skull and to roses see horn section in Phil and friends. Like, at Skull and Rose. That's yeah. crazy. Well, the last time we saw Phil and Friends in Eugene uh, with you and I, it, you it, rocked, crying. it rocked my work. They, before they even did a note, yeah, I was they crying. walked out on stage and you started crying. Because Phil and Bobby are totally different to me. And not just because they play different music and they're different people. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, because they're with the dead, you can group them together, right? But like, they have a completely different... Um, when I think about them, I don't think about them in the same way at all. And maybe it is because Phil is playing with his son. You know, there's something about literal family, blood family, where he's taking his son. And, you know, I think about our kids to like taking your, our, our Simon or our Sydney under our wing to do what we're doing and, and showing them the way and then them even transcending what we do. Mm-hmm. Bobby didn't get to do that. He's, you know, he's kind of his, his solo. Daughters don't, his daughters don't. Yeah. Play music. I mean, maybe he's done that in different ways, but the fact that Phil's bringing on his son and like, they're literally sharing the stage together and he's, he's not going anywhere either until he's done, but he's passing the torch and, and keeping it at the same time with his son. Like that, there's just something very special about that. And so that's why I'm so attracted to the, to what Phil does with Phil and friends because it's literal family. It's not just musical family. It's literal family. And then here he goes to bring in more family, more, more family. Yeah. Like it just is something that I family. I love it. Skull and roses is going to be a thing. Man. Yeah. This is, I'm looking forward to this skull and roses more than ever. Only because the Latin dead boom box, Phil and friends with tab, like those three things. Dogs in a pile. Dogs in a pile. 
Garcia, um, birthday, Garcia band. birthday Band. This is a huge, like, for No Simple Road, it's huge because of all of the previous guests that we've had on that are going to be gracing the stage. That is like the ultimate, like, rooting for your team and, well and, and we've been part of the growth of that yeah too. this will be our third one we've seen it get bigger and bigger and yeah you know what's a trip is i remember 20 our first skull and roses was 2019 i remember in 2018 um sitting out on the front porch on instagram looking at the first skull and roses and seeing um O'Teal on stage and i think Hmm. I could be wrong about this, but okay. my memory is weird. I think Neil was there in a weird way. I, I can't remember I don't know that. if I'm associating that wrong or not, but whatever. Um, but I remember watching some of the first Skull and Roses and being like, fuck, why aren't we there? We should have been there. Like, this is amazing. And then the next year to to be welcomed into that scene there and what's going on. and have an opportunity to meet those people and talk to them and do. And now like Apple just said, this is our third one. Like we're not yeah. wet behind the ears. No, we're part anymore. of it. We're part of the thing. And we have actually like, however small had a part in helping that thing grow. We we have actually had a, a well, I mean, we're, just like anything that skull and roses does, like we're a part of it. Like, period (laughs) big or small we're a part of it yeah totally and even if it's the pinky nail try ripping your pinky nail off right now exactly it'll hurt exactly (laughs) so you know what i mean i'm fine to be the pinky nail of skull and roses me too me i i fucking love it a hair one hair on the head of skull and roses i'm good but here's the thing we get to go back now and it's not we're not learning how to do it we we're established in that thing and and we understand where we're going to be and who to talk to and how it works and how to so the content that we are going to create for this thing are, is going to be better every time because well, we're more relaxed and also i like what she said i wrote it down and i just kind of adopted it to us we are all improvisers that's what we do. We improvise that entire conversation with Natalie. Every interview that anyone has ever heard prior to this interview that you just listened to with Natalie has been improvisational. We've not, um, the only thing we've known is that we're going to speak with a certain person and everything after that, whether it's laughter, tears, uh, deep conversations or, you know, little trails, all of that is new and new to us, new to the the person that we're talking to. So in a weird way, I feel like we are part of the performance and the, <laughs> the stage of no skull of, of not, I was going to say no skull and roses, like no simple road. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> well, you're right. Cause we do have, like she was talking about, we have a way of finishing each other's sentences and stuff. Like we don't prepare. We all do our own research. We're listening to our own yeah. things. Like you we always come, say you do the research, but we all do. No, research. we all, yeah, yeah, we all do the research. I, you know, it, it, it's like you look for those little tidbits like, like that, like about her doing ballet. Mm-hmm. found it going down the rabbit hole as in one little interview years ago and and stuff but we all come to it with our and then we get to learn from each other as well as them when we're you know doing this and and not for nothing but five days on the beach is not bad and i'm gonna actually leave you guys if you don't let me go to the beach because last year we were working our fingers to the bone and it was like we we need to go to the beach we had we had plenty of days last year that we could have and we didn't do it and sage from (laughs) the sponge boys and bright were were like we've got to do it because i've heard many people say you got to take the walk from the grounds down to that pier that you can see off of the distance go out on the pier like have lunch and stuff Walk under the pier, walk on the beach, you know. There's yeah, yeah I know we're there. I know we're there to work, but we got to get we will. that other side. We too. Will. In five days, we'll have time to. Hey, if you're if you're on the fence about coming to Skull and Roses, psh, 
get off the fence. Come hang out Natalie with us. Natalie blew you off with her trombone. That's right. She you, blew you off the fence. Right off the fence. <laughs> you can go to skullandroses.com to get your tickets, or you can go to nosimpleroad.com and click on the big Skull and Roses banner that's on there, and it'll take you through to a link to grab your tickets. And come see Phil and Friends. Come see Boombox. Come see Dogs in a Pile, Garcia Birthday Band. Um, the Latin, Latin Dead. Dead. So m- Dark Star Orchestra. Help me out. Jerry's I'll middle finger, Cubensis. They I mean they, you, the list goes on. Yeah. Yes. It's if you're a deadhead, or even if you just dig Grateful Dead music, or if you just dig music, come hang out. It's one of the best festivals on the West Coast, period. We wouldn't be going there if that wasn't the case. So and also we'd be remiss not to mention one last time. Thank you to Dennis McNally oh, Dennis. for believing in us and being in our corner and making us part of School and Roses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hey, you get to see the tab horn section play with Phil. I mean, that that alone is yeah. worth the ticket. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they do have single day tickets. So if you can't be there the entire five days, get yourself your single day ticket to come out and see whoever it is that you're wanting to see. Well, there it is. Mel has spoken. You better listen. Yeah. You're going to be in big, big just trouble. Literally have fun with us and yourself at Skull and Roses, Ventura, California. And April. also April 19th, what? Through the 23rd? That's right. April 19th through the 23rd. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can also follow us on all the social media platforms at No Simple Road. You can go to www.nosimpleroad.com. You can get a tarot reading from me and Mel. You can sign yep. up there through our website. With the, we'll use the Grateful Dead tarot deck. You get a one hour reading with us. That's pretty cool. You can go to Patreon and sign up and get all the Patreon only content we have going over there, which is quite a lot. We're going to be doing a Patreon only hangout on St. Patty's Day. That's going to be fun. Hang out with our crew, our Patreon folk, the crew. And uh, the crew yeah, is growing. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and all the other stuff you do. You, you, this isn't the only, well, could be, but most likely this isn't the only podcast that you listen to. And you know the drill. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah tell a friend, tell a family member. You know, if you like us, you know somebody else that will. We'll be back on Monday with another edition of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind. And next Friday with another episode. And until then, take care of each other. Smile at a stranger. Safety third. Hydrate. Hugs. Hugs. And you know what? Every once in a while, you got to go around the house and flick the light bulbs in your house to make sure they're still good. Just go go do that so that you don't burn out any light bulbs this week because you don't want burnt out light bulbs. You come home from somewhere and it's dark and you go to flip on the light and it goes and then you're like, fuck, and then you trip over the dog and the whole thing happens. Like that. And story. I would say this. Take a note from Natalie's book and learn something new. Yeah. Listen to Mel. Yeah. Love you guys. Peace. Get a salad. tell you about the April May 2023 issue of Relics magazine it features a Dave Matthews band cover story with additional articles and interviews with the National, Graham Nash, Wayne Shorter, ALO, Ivan Neville, our friend Eric Krasno and Stanton Moore, Marty Stewart and much more. Check out the latest version of Relics and subscribe now at relics.com/dmb. Thanks Relics. 
What's up, everyone? It's Joe, and I'm the host of That's Awesome with Joe, a podcast on the newly formed Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. I talk with tons of your favorite artists, managers, touring personnel, and more. Most of the time we talk about music, but lots of the time we end up talking about something completely unrelated. We laugh a lot. We do a lot of really stupid things, but also some things that are really informative and interesting. Basically, it's a podcast that I think you should listen to. Obviously, I'm biased because it's my podcast, but I think I might be into it if I wasn't the host. Check it out at SoundTalentMedia.com.